Good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for uh, tuning in to watch our What's Up Wednesday. Um, welcome, Hayden, from Foundation Fund Managers. Thank you so much for joining us this chilly morning. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Jeepers, fresh this morning, eh? Um, definitely winter flexing its muscles today, that's for sure. Absolutely. Hey, it's, um, we didn't meet last week. I think the last time we had a chat was about two weeks ago. And um, it was quite a bit of um, brand strengthening at the time. We had come off the high 14s and we were hovering around the 14 to the dollar mark. Um, but then we saw it fluctuating between 14, 14, 14, um, 14, 15, just going all the way there. And now when you look, we, we've cracked the 14 mark. What's actually happened? What were some of the major events and what was the, mo the most important thing that the, the markets were, were focusing on? Sure. Yeah, you know, um, a couple of weeks back, we were kind of trading in the sideways pattern. And um, it's been the RAND's trend of late, uh, developing a sideways trend, then breaking that floor lower, then sitting in that channel for a while and breaking the floor lower. And two weeks ago, we were exactly there, but at a slightly higher level than where we are now. We were trying our best to get below 1395. Um, that seemed to be the floor at the time that was proving quite stubborn. Every time we went down there, um, something happened in the market that pushed us back above 14 and yeah, back up to around the 14, 14, 14, 15 level. Um, and two Wednesdays ago, we were sitting here waiting for the, the Federal Reserve meeting minutes, the Fed being the American Central Bank, and of course the guys that dictate the monetary policy. Um, and what they say moves the dollar and therefore moves the rand. Fed minutes are typically very, very boring. Um, they really, uh, you know, move at glacial pace in terms of making any decisions for good reason. They don't want to spook the market. Um, and the Fed as a unit, and they're continually talking to the market, having speeches and forums and all sorts of other uh, interactions with the market. Um, to a man, they were all saying that there's going to be no change. Uh, we're sticking to our guns. We're not going to um, trim our, our bond buying pro uh, program, which is at a staggering $120 billion a month that they're buying bonds and, and various other assets. And definitely not going to be hiking interest rates anytime soon because they feel that the labor market in the US is far from being recovered. So that's uh, late that afternoon, early evening, the Fed minutes came out. Everybody had a bit of a yawn going, here we go again. And they surprised us. They, 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 they put in, and, and remember, their language that they put into these minutes is every single word is thought about. There's nothing that just, just finds its way in there by chance. And the, the little phrase that caught the market's eye was, at some point, it would be appropriate to start looking at tapering their, their bond buying uh, program. So that was the very first hint that we got from the Fed that actually, um, and, and the minutes showed that there was a, and if this term makes sense, there was a large minority of Fed members wanting to start talking about trimming their bond purchasing program. Caught the market off guard, the dollar loved that, and it strengthened and sent the rand to back to 14, 15, just when we were trying to get below 14 again. I'm with you. So we've had this little hint from the Fed. We've been speculating whether the Fed would stick to their guns and try and leave the, the um, interest rate unchanged for some time. What else has there been going on in, in, the, in the markets? Any other signals um, that the markets have taken notice of? I've, I've, the currency hasn't seemed changed at all with this little hint. We, we seem yeah. to still be where we were yesterday. Uh, you know, what's going on there? Yeah, you know, th there's been an interesting split um, in the Fed messaging since that, uh, that day. And I don't know, maybe it's by chance or maybe the conspiracy theorists out there will say that it's, a, a, again, a well choreographed move by the Fed to say, all right, some of us will say we're going to stand still. Others must go out and start spreading the message that they're thinking about, about changing. Um, and, and teeing us up for uh, the next Fed meeting, which is on the 16th of June, where they could potentially just creep, um, uh, uh, you know, some more aggressive language into, into the narrative. But in the interim, we've had the likes of Jerome Powell, who's the Fed chair, he's, he's the, the main guy there and really dictates the play. 
he's been standing firm saying Labor's nowhere near full employment. It's, it's only increasing at a gradual pace. Inflation is transitory, i.e. there is a spike in US inflation. There's no doubt about it. We've seen it in a number of indicators, which I'll talk about in a moment. But that will dissipate mainly because, A, the inflation readings we get now are based on the year-on-year -year readings anyway, are based on this time last year when prices were suppressed because of, of lockdown. But also, we've got a, a bottleneck in supply materials coming in, factories struggling to reopen, it's creating upward price pressures, which will alleviate as the market opens up, you know, more fully. So he's saying, don't worry, guys, the Fed's not going to do anything. <clears throat> but then we've had these other Fed members, and even as high as the vice chair, the, the guy sitting in the seat next to Jerome Powell, saying, it's going to be time, not today, but it's going to be time to start talking about first trimming their bond purchasing program, so bringing that $120 billion down ever so slowly, but that's the precursor then to talking about hiking interest rates at some point. So you've got half of the Fed saying one thing, half of the Fed saying another. We've had oil moving above $71 a barrel yesterday, which if it stays there, points to inflation creeping through, you know, prices get passed through to consumers at the end of the day. At some point, we've had the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, which they call personal consumption expenditure, PCE, that came out last Friday. It's at a 12-year high. There's no doubt that inflation is in the market. And it's really going to be a case of who blinks first. Yeah, yeah. So we are now getting fed up with the Fed being indecisive. <laughs> um, the 16th of June, you said, is the day where we'll, we'll hear some more from the Fed. Are there any local events that are moving the market, moving the rand? Yeah, you know, I mean, as I've mentioned previously, the RAND is very much a function of the dollar. I would say 80%, if not more, of our movements is because of what's happening in the US market and the dollar. Nothing we can do about that. We're an emerging market. They're, you know, they're the main guys on the block. However, there are always little pockets of news locally that do move us from time to time. Um, and in the last few days, we've had some good stuff and we've had some bad stuff. Uh, on Monday, on the positive side, we had our... Um, April's trade balance uh, stat came out. It was a tough act to follow because March, the trade surplus in March was a record, 52.57 billion Rand, um, highest on, on record. And, and you would think that having done such a huge amount of exporting uh, over the month of March, potentially the pipelines had been exhausted to a degree. We we're gonna have a pullback in April while things consolidate and, and get ready for a push into the rest of the year. Turns out that's not the case, and April fell only just short of March. Um, <clears throat> April came in at 51.24 billion or something like that. <clears throat> so we almost set the bar higher still uh, in consecutive months. Trade surpluses mean we are building our foreign exchange reserves, and that's always ran positive. So, yeah. you know, that's been good for us. Um, Layered on top of that, I suppose, is the international feel-good stuff, which I should have mentioned earlier, in that the market has latched onto what Jerome Powell has been saying and ignored what the other Fed members are saying. And we've not moved down to 1395, but broken well below that, set a recent low of uh, 1367 to the dollar, and now find ourselves in the 1370s. So that's kind of our range we're trading in right now. Uh, and our, our, our good, good data on, on Monday saw us move back down to, to 1372, sort of bottom end of, of the current range. Mm. Um, unfortunately, that was Monday. And yesterday, we got a couple of uh, doses of, of bad news, uh, not unexpected. Um, first of all came our unemployment rate uh, for Q1 2020. The first quarter was expected to slide from 32.5% unemployment, which is a record high, to 33.5%, which would have been a new record high, uh, obviously bad for our economy with increasing unemployment. Fortunately, I suppose, it didn't increase by as much as feared. We only went from 32.5 to 32.6, so the, only the smallest of, of upticks, still a new high though, so, so that's not great. Uh, and, and worryingly, I think the unemployment stat only looks at people who are actively looking for work. So 32.6% of our active labor force cannot find work. There's another measure that looks at those that have given up looking for work, they've become discouraged. Yeah. And that is sitting at 43.2%. So 43.2% of our employable labor force without work at the moment, which is uh, 
definitely uh, ran negative. And then of course, Eskim, uh, again, no real surprise, cold snaps moved in, demand for electricity is shot up with heaters and, and various other devices to keep us as comfortable as possible. Um, load shedding is back, and uh, not just intermittent load shedding, we've got continuous load shedding from 10 o'clock today till 10 o'clock on Friday night, apparently. We'll see how, if that gets extended, but you know, stage two, the market's kind of got used to that. If we see a deterioration in that, then, then maybe the RAND will move weaker. But yeah. Uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Absolute. With the, um, the load shedding, are they still doing all their maintenance whilst they're doing the load shedding? So yes. there is negative, but also some positive spin. They're actually getting some of the infrastructure sorted out. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. always going to be maintenance. Um, Andre de Reuter, the, the new CEO, well, not so new now, he's been there for a while, been very aggressive on the maintenance front was upfront with the public um, some time ago saying, guys, we're going to go through load shedding continuously or, you know, uh, not all day, every day, but uh, sporadic load shedding for a continuous period of time, if that makes sense, um, for years, not just months, while they catch up on their backlog of maintenance. The problem is that they also have unplanned outages, which is what we're seeing right now. There's a number of units that have gone down just because they're old, um, the wheels are wobbling, and uh, they need emergency servicing and that takes power away from the grid. And we've seen recently, I don't know if you've noticed, but we've had load shedding at night from sort of 10 at night until five in the morning, which seems like a strange time to have load shedding. You'd think that power demand is, is not that high um, over that period of the day. What's actually happening is they've exhausted the hydroelectric plants. So running water, I think we've got three hydroelectric plants. They run the water down the mountain during the day water turns a turbine, it's an emergency source of, of electricity, but then they need to get that water back up to the top dam overnight, which takes even more electricity than the water generated on the way down. And so they have to load shed while we're all sleeping to get the water back to the top of the mountain to do it all, all again tomorrow. Um, and, uh, and that's kind of a precursor to showing that there's, there's underlying worries. It turns out it's been proven true. So, so here we are, a couple of stations have gone down, so, so load shedding. Mm. So we have got a fairly, potentially fairly unaffected RAND until the 16th of June. We're holding, holding thumbs and we wait to hear what the Fed has to say with regards to their um, inflation and their interest rates. Yeah, you know, the euro and the pound um, and the Canadian dollar are, are really, really strong against the US dollar right now. Mm. The Canadian dollar, their central bank has said they're going to be hiking interest rates in 2022. The European Central Bank has said that they are looking at uh, monetary policy, not exactly what they're going to do, but they acknowledge that there's, there's you know, a change is potentially afoot. And the same with the, uh, the, the Bank of England, the, the UK Central Bank, one of their policy um, uh, sectors last week saying that while an interest rate is only penciled in for late 2022, that could be brought forward if their continued acceleration out of the COVID slump continues. Um, yeah. And the currencies have, have shot forward just on that, you know, messaging. At some point, the Fed will join the party. We don't know when. It could be June. It could be July. It could be whenever their next meeting is after July. But at some point, they're going to change. And when they do, the RAND's going to have a little bit of a, a difficult patch. But until then, hey, we're below 14, so it's all good. Absolute. Well, Hayden, thank you so much for What's Up Wednesday. It was great to connect with you again. I hope you enjoy your weekend. I believe there is going to be snow in the Berg, Underberg area. I think there is already. And I see the sardines are on the, the boil again on the south coast. I think they were reported at um, Port Edward yesterday. So for those of you who would like to have a look at the sardine run, I suggest making your way through to some of the coastal um, areas this weekend and have a little gander. But thank you again, Hayden. And I hope you have an awesome week. Yeah, plenty going on out there that doesn't need any electricity. So if you're stuck, go and look at the snow or look at the sides. Absolute. Wonderful, Hayden. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Gary. Cheers now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.